Hello and welcome to SA Weekender. Well, there are a few things in life quite as lovely as going to high tea. And Adelaide has some really special and unique options, like high tea here on the Popeye. I'll have more on that shortly, but first, let's check out what the rest of the team are serving up. Ron discovers why our Flinders Rangers plays a starring yep, role yep. in creating movie hey. magic. The latest Big Barossa Red will show you a fun and fabulous way to tour the valley. This is a sweet ride. But first, here's Kelly. What do you get when you mix an iconic South Australian drinks company with a winery that has been closed for 10 years? Not your ordinary distillery. The historic 23rd Street Distillery in Renmark has been brought back to life with a stunning renovation. Built in 1914, it was once a thriving winery and distillery, but after a series of owners fell on financial hard times, closing its doors in 2004. It sat vacant for just over 10 years until finally Angelo and Mary Costas, a South Australian family under the Bickford Group, took ownership and it took just over two years to renovate our Stage 1 and bring it back to what you see today as an operating distillery. Now completely transformed, the cellar door features high beam ceilings and an open rustic feel. But it's the drinks they produce on site that are getting international acclaim. Here, old style craft spirits like gin, whiskey and brandy have been reinvented with a unique modern spin. All the 23rd Street products are award winning and all made here on site. The distillery is all about producing crafted and innovative distillations of spirits using local Riverland fruit as well as innovative products like our rose vodka made from the local roses from Rusdens and also our beautiful brandies and our whiskies. Inside the distillery today, their beautiful Riverland rose vodka is being made. Using restored copper steels that are a century old, up to 10 kilos of rose petals are used in each batch. Now that I've seen it being made, I can't wait to try it. So a tasting flight featuring all their signature drinks is just the shot. I've been waiting to try this. Yes. I've heard so much about it. Quite smooth. Some Turkish delight rose sweetness in there, so. Perfect mix is probably soda and lime, but very nice uh, just on ice yeah, as well. Yeah, soda with the mm. ice would be delicious. Exactly. I recommend that. <laughs> with the blending of gin, the order of priority in the blending is juniper first, somewhere about the 50% mark. After that is coriander. And if you think there could be a gin distiller inside of you, their blending masterclass is just the ticket. Under the watchful eye of head distiller Graham Buller, who has 40 years of experience, my own concoction could be the next big thing. One and a half mils of fresh mandarin is next. With an array of test tubes and liquid botanicals like star anise, angelica chips and lime, this is way more fun than high school chemistry. OK, I've finished. I'm a bit short of 20 mils. Oh, you'll be so fine. I mean, It'll terrible, be, it will be fine. <laughs> Calibration, error, not a problem. OK. Now we need it in a glass so you can taste it. And if you like it... Ah, yeah. oh, this is the fun bit. This is the fun bit. It's got some punch, I tell you. It's beautiful, though. It is. Aromatic. To learn more about this historic site and see how the distilling process works, guided tours are held several times a day. They even have their own museum with many items donated by former employees. Your winning recipe. Fantastic. Have I got a career in this? You have potential in it, no doubt. Is it going to be on the shelves anytime soon? Mm. That's a no. <laughs> With great food, drink and behind the scenes access, the 23rd Street Distillery is a must-see destination in Renmark. For more information, just head to their website. I don't serve scabs. Coming up, why corn continues to entertain movie makers. Corn, a magnet for movie makers and its contribution to Australian cinema is on show at the Quandong Cafe. 
this place is buried deep in the consciousness of those who love Australian cinema. After all, it's featured in some classic Australian movies. Films like Gallipoli, Sunday Too Far Away, Robbery Under Arms, and of course, The Shirley, both versions. Its iconic railway station was the backdrop for legendary actor Jack Thompson's tirade in one of the South Australian Film Corporation's most famous movies. You scabs! That's what you are! You're the lowest form of life! Little wonder corn features so prominently in so many Aussie flicks. After all, it looks like a film set. Pubs like the Austral provide the perfect backdrop for a barroom brawl or two. Probably the most famous scene here would be from Sunday Too Far Away. I don't serve scabs. And uh, it'd be the big fight scene between Jack Thompson and all the shearers. Audio specialist John Simpson works with Hollywood legends like George Lucas, and he does it from this shed in the hills surrounding the town. More than anyone, he understands the pull of this outback gem. There's a lot of buildings here which still remain the same. So you can go into some of them and, and the set dresses and stuff wouldn't really have to do much. That age is still in the, in the town. And it's not just the town. The back roads speak of another era when swaggies roamed the country and one in particular with a troublesome daughter in tow. Dad? What's the matter now? Carry me. How many times I got to tell you? You've got to learn to hoof it. Like walking with a flaming mushroom. Corn has kept its rugged outback charm, and much of its heritage appeal goes back to the days of steam. This is a town that honours its railway past and preserves it. Come school holidays, chugging charmers like the world famous coffee pot take to the narrow gauge line outside the Corn Railway Station. At one point, this was Railway Central, with the Transcontinental Railway cutting across the country and the Great Northern Railway pushing north. Eventually it would go all the way to Alice Springs, but it had various railheads that went to Corn, then to Hawker, to Mari, Udna, Data, and then eventually off to Alice Springs itself. Corn was really the stepping off point. There was a little bit here before that, because the, the great sort of wheat boom of the 1870s was taking place 74, 75. But the railway arrived in 1879, and Corn then very quickly became a very important railway town. If it's not the coffee pot serving up an espresso shot of railway history, it's the legendary Gan you'll find rolling through Pitchy Ritchie Pass. Back in the days when the Great Northern Railway was pushing ever northward, this was a common sight. And over time, the name of this world famous railway line changed to the Gan. Legend has it that an Afghan camelier hopped off the train here at Corn, took out his mat, faced it towards Mecca and said his prayers. One wag standing nearby was overheard to say, what is this, the Afghan Express? And so the name stuck. For many World War II soldiers, this railway line and this town hold a special place in the heart. It was here that the ladies of the Country Women's Association upheld a promise. Suddenly in the war, there was 50 trains a week. So how many troops are going up there? Well, we know that the Corn CWA women, they made a commitment that no soldier would pass through Corn without a hot meal. And we know they served over 300,000 meals. Today it's still a great place to stop for a feed and dine out on its railway and movie history. Corn's located in the southern Flinders, a good four and a half hours drive north of Adelaide. After the break, cruise in the Barossa in a fire truck limo. It's an emergency. I'm out of wine. Now, I could just go down to the bottle shop, but why would I when I can go direct to the source in a fire truck? Officer Mark Moore is my driver, with Commander Janine supervising from the back. And this has to be one of the most unique ways to take a wine tour of the Barossa. Mark, what on earth gave me the idea for a fire truck? Just that point of difference. We're always looking for something different to bring to the Barossa. <laughs> and what's our top speed? Top speed, I think, is about 90 kilometres an hour, so fast enough to get around the Barossa. <laughs> well, that's kind of an understatement. 
Mark and Janine tailor their tours to suit their clients' interests, which in my case can be pretty broadly categorised under wine. Well, this is my best ever arrival at a cellar door. Something different, <laughs> isn't it? Sharkies have grown grapes in the Barossa for six generations, and winemaker Damien has built a striking timber cellar door to showcase the fruits of his labour. But I wasn't expecting this. Oh, this is amazing. A magical descent under the vine roots into a subterranean barrel room. I think I've found my new home. But no time to dream, we're on a mission. You know what else is fantastic about a fire truck? Storage. Now, what's the rules about sirens and flashing lights? Yeah, no, they want to lock you up and throw the key away. So, oh. sorry, no sirens, oh. no flashing lights. Oh, Mark. I, I know. Our next stop is the David Franz cellar door, a cosy, rustic stone cottage with a welcoming fire and a range of provisions for building your own platter. Janine and I are trying out a semion named for the winemaker's mum, Barossa legend Margaret Lehman. Mark is trying out the water. I can taste it from here. Here you could happily escape the real world for an hour or three, but I can go one better than that time travel. Now, after a hard day's wine tasting in a fire truck, I do like to come home and slip into something comfortable, like the 70s. Janine and Mark have turned their own four-bedroom home in Nuriutpa into an extraordinary retro B&B, which they hand over to guests in its entirety. This is our environment every single day. I, I wished I had a normal haircut, but I grow my hair just so I can <laughs> still live in the 70s and 80s. The Moors have done this before, just next door, with a 50s-inspired B&B that they still operate. But they just couldn't stop at one. Because I think we just want to live through the decades, like sort of the 70s, 80s, that was pretty cool stuff. So we had this four bedroom home and thought, well, we've done the 50s, 60s, let's do the 70s, 80s. And we can remember what the 1780s and was all about. The sad thing is, yeah, we can remember yeah. what the 70s, some of this stuff is our wedding presents. <laughs> <laughs> that we've just opened. Yeah. <laughs> Your dreams will be positively psychedelic in these bedrooms, which all together can accommodate eight, making this a great house for a gang of groovy friends staying in the Barossa. Just look at the entertainment area, complete with swingin' Steve Austin. But don't get too carried away. Janine's been known to rev up the cop car for unruly guests. Actually, it's just another very cool option for touring the wineries. Cruise over to both of Janine and Mark's websites to check out their tours or their accommodation. You'll be hard pressed to meet more welcoming, entertaining and unique hosts. What happens for you guys next? Like, what happens when you slowly creep up to, to, to where we are now and you're up to date with your decor? We'll have to look for another property. I'd like to do Art Deco, actually. Yeah. <laughs> you don't look keen, Mark. No. <laughs> <laughs> Next, dishing up Adelaide's most unique high teas. Just load up. <laughs> well, dress up and bring your best manners because today I'm going to take you on a tour of some of Adelaide's most interesting and exquisite high teas. We begin here at Udder Delights in Harndorf where high tea is served with a cheesy twist. SA Tourism Hall of Famer Udder Delights has long been a mecca for cheese lovers. Founder Cherie Sullivan had several requirements when creating her high tea menu, that it be fresh, homemade and served with cheesy flair. And of course, local sparkling and piping hot tea was a given. Let's talk about this very yeah. impressive tower so we have what here. What we've got on the low level is our Utter Delights actual heritage brie here with local dried fruits and crackers. We go onto what we call a chicken ribbon sandwich. Another cheesy twist here, we've got our caramelised onion and Utter Delights goat curd tarts. And then on the top we have got a little bit more cheese because it's our berry cheesecakes, some orange and almond and cardamom cakes and finishing off with some macarons just because of the little French influence, I guess, with the cheese. Yum, I so love the way you carried the cheese all the way yeah, through. Yeah. 
And you can enjoy these utterly delicious temptations either in the cosy cellar where we're sitting or up in the cafe area. What about high tea etiquette? Is yeah. there a way that you're meant to approach this? Me, generally, I go all savoury, then I go all sweet, but you know, sometimes you've got a savoury stomach and a sweet stomach, and mm -hmm. if you sometimes alternate back and forth, you can fit more in. Okay. <laughs> My next unique high tea destination is aboard Adelaide's beloved Popeye. Gliding along the river torrents, watching the sights go by, there couldn't be a lovelier way to enjoy sweet and savoury delights served on gorgeous china. With her father Tony having recently retired, Bianca Schumann is now at the helm and she's thrilled her new idea is a hit. Bianca, this is a pretty unique offering here. Hi tea, we're on the water. What's the response been like? The response has been really amazing. So we started in December last year. We've sold out 15 so far. I'm sure you, in your job you get to taste test. So yes, what are some of the lucky. best? So I'd say the strawberry cheesecake and maybe the lemon drizzle are my favourite. Okay. Yeah. I think those okay. sausage rolls look nice yeah. as well. Fluffy scones, dainty cakes and meringue kisses are homemade by mother and daughter team Julie and Emily. They hail from Yorkshire. You can't get more authentic than that. There's nothing like a pretty cake and a cuppa to help your cares float away. I think it's a really different experience for people to have. It's lovely to enjoy something so nice but then have this going on in the background. I think it's really special. My next stop is a must for anyone who is serious about their high tea. Well, beautiful, elegant and first class is how I'd describe the Mayfair Hotel. And it's just the same for their famous high tea. Relaxing in the comfort of its graceful interior, sipping tea from Wedgwood, China, this has to be the ultimate girls' day out. On offer are delectable savouries like sausage rolls and ribbon sandwiches, exquisite macarons and scones, and even pastry shoe swans. It's an Instagrammer's dream. Cheers. Cheers. So Bethany, tell us a bit about the offering here at the Mayfair because it looks absolutely beautiful. Oh, thank you. Look, we try to keep it as classic and as traditional as possible. We really celebrate the old hotel style, inspired by the Ritz and Claridge's. We've got a pastry chef and she makes our own puff pastry. So, you know, the sausage rolls and the curry puffs are all beautifully made. And if you still have room for more, you can choose from a sumptuous selection of goodies from the Mayfair's famous French gâteau trolley. Maybe you should try one of these ones. No, no. Excuse my fingers. For more details about dates and times for the high teas at Utter Delights, the Popeye and Mayfair Hotel, just visit their websites. Make sure you book. This is a treat you don't want to miss. Well, that's all we've got time for today, but I hope you've enjoyed the show. And for more ideas on where to eat, drink and explore in South Australia, be sure to visit our website. There are a ton of ideas. We'll see you next time.